everybody, my name is Tim Pulaski with TriMac, and today we're going to get to know SolidWorks Electrical 3D. So SolidWorks Electrical 3D is an extension of the SolidWorks Electrical schematic software that works right inside of the SolidWorks 3D CAD interface. What it does is it allows you to take the 2D design and translate that into 3D in the form of routed wires and cables and harnesses to allow you to get valuable information out of the design, such as wire and cable lengths, as well as just interference between components and their actual size. So what we're going to see today is we're going to see what it's like working with electrical 3D, inserting components into an existing mechanical design, and then we're going to actually take a step back and look at a, uh, a routing assembly for a harness and see what uh, special attributes go along with harness design. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. So what we're looking at right now is SolidWorks Electrical 3D, which is an add-in for SolidWorks. You can see what it does is it gives us an additional panel in the software that allows us to browse into our electrical project and preview things like schematic drawings. But what it also gives us is a direct link to all of the components that have been used in this particular project. What this allows me to do is easily see whether or not these components have been represented in the 3D representation of the electrical design. So right now I've got a mechanical cabinet here that's been pre-populated with some components, but we're missing a few components that we need to add onto these two rails down here. So the process to insert these is by simply coming over here to the left, right-clicking on a component, and selecting Insert. What it does is it's going to browse into your own libraries and grab a 3D representation of that particular part number and allow me to insert it into my design. What this does is it tells the software through association that this 3D model is representative of this particular component, K1. Now if I wanted to insert multiple components very, very quickly, I can grab them from this list over here on the left using Shift Select right click and select insert for all of them at the same time. If there's any outliers that I want to remove, I can pull them out of the stack and I can also reorder the stack by adjusting the order of the components. What this lets me do is insert all of these at the same time by placing the first component and then setting a spacing for all the subsequent components, say 15 millimeters. When I say OK, it's just going to go to my library and grab the correct part number for each and every one of these parts and drop them into the design. Once they're in SolidWorks Electrical or SolidWorks itself, they're just like any other SolidWorks models. And I can go ahead and reorient these, reposition these, and mate them together uh, wherever they should go. Now terminal stri strips work very, very similarly, except they've got that multi-add functionality built right in. So I can right click on a terminal strip and drop in the first terminal and it's going to automatically go ahead and insert all the terminals that are involved in this particular strip, building that terminal strip for me to spec. So this allows me to ensure that this particular terminal strip matches my electrical schematic and that all the components actually match my electrical sch schematic as well. So we'll do this one more time for another terminal strip. But you sort of get the point. Now if there's ever a, a component that isn't available in my library, and it's a brand new part, I can always right click on a component and select insert from file. And allow me to browse for the part just like I normally would any other SolidWorks file. So now that we've inserted most of the components into this electrical enclosure, we're going to go ahead and route wires. Now most people think this is going to be the most time consuming aspect of utilizing electrical 3D, but in fact it's the least time consuming. All I need to do is click a button up on my ribbon, set a few parameters over here on the left, and say go. And what the software does is it's going to reference the 2D schematic that this 3D model derived from and it's going to link up all of the components based on how they've been connected in 2D. And hey, look at that. So in just a few seconds, we were able to route all of the wires between these devices in 3D. This gives us a couple of benefits. The first of which 
is we now have a visual representation of how all of the components are actually connected. The additional benefit here is that we also have things like wire lengths. So one of the great things that this gives us is a graphical representation of all of the electrical connections between devices. But in addition to that, what it also lets us do is pull out things like the wire lengths. As soon as I routed these wires, it was able to give me a routed length in my wire run list for every single wire. This allows me to better estimate how much wire I'm going to need for a project, or I can even take it to the degree of determining cut lengths for each and every wire in a project. Now, all of these wires were able to find their way from component to component rather nicely, weren't they? They all follow these ductways and seem to know not to cut across the cabinet out through the door. So let's talk about how this is actually being driven in SOLIDWORKS Electrical 3D. So the software did a really nice job of following the ductways in this cabinet. How do you suppose it did that? Well, over here in our SOLIDWORKS tree, at the very bottom, there was a specific sketch that we had created beforehand that allowed us to define valid pathways that the electrical wires can take from point A to point B. So this is something called a path sketch, and it's created just using a 3D sketch in SOLIDWORKS itself. And what it does is it allows us to define grids and pathways for these wires to take. You can sort of think of them as highways for wires. I can store these pathways in either the top level assembly, or I can store it in the components themselves. For example, inside of this duct, I've got a path sketch that just runs down the center line. So the advantage to doing this in ductways and things of that nature is I only need one sketch in the component, and every time I use that component inside of SOLIDWORKS itself, it's going to pull in that path sketch. And just by doing that, I get a nice highway system that I can uh, use to route wires from point A to point B. So what we've just seen is how we can route wires in something of an industrial application. But what about electronics applications where we have PCBs or other devices connected with connectors and harnesses? So what I want to demonstrate for you is how we can capture this using SOLIDWORKS Electrical 3D and the different steps that are involved. So let's go ahead and take a look. So what I want to do in this particular enclosure is connect these two PCBs together with a lot of these enclosure fans to make sure that everything is properly ventilated. Over here on the left, we have a components list that's similar to our industrial application, but instead of just standard components, we also have connectors that we need to place in this design. So what I'll do is I'll zoom in on this PCB, and we're going to insert one of our 10-pin connectors by right-clicking on it and selecting Insert. Now, I don't need the crimp terminals that come along with this connector. The housing will suffice. So I'm going to remove those and only insert the housing. What we can do is we can then just hover over that PCB, and using mate references in SOLIDWORKS, I can easily snap this connector into place. We'll do the same thing down here, behind this push button, for one of my six-pin connectors. Same process. I can either right-click and say insert, or you can actually expand this out and just right-click on the housing itself and insert only that. All right, so by snapping these into place, what I'm doing is I'm defining the from and the to, the origin and destination, for all of these components in my harness. So I'll place one fan connector up here, as well as two at the back of the cabinet over here. And you can see these mate references really make this a breeze and very easy to insert into the rest of the design. Once I've got everything placed, Instead of routing wires, what I'm going to do is I'm going to route all of these components together as a harness. And you get some really special functionality when you do. So if I say route harnesses, when I do so, what the software is going to do for me is not only route the harness routes, such as the wires and cables, but it's also going to collect up all of the connectors within that harness and produce a subassembly within the SOLIDWORKS architecture. So just like that, the software is able to route all of these connectors together and combine them into one finished routed harness assembly. 
Now what I'll do is I'll save this in an external file so that I can document this separate from this particular enclosure. So we'll just run with the default name is fine. So by doing that, we can open up this assembly in a separate file and we can begin to work with this. So now that I have the routed assembly, I can start using this to produce manufacturing prints for the assembly by generating with this a 2D image of the flattened state. So it's very easy to do in SolidWorks. All I need to do is right click on the route and say flatten route. What I'll do is I'll select where I want the straight portion of this to occur, say between these two connectors here, and the orientation that I want. Say I want this to be horizontal. What that'll do is it's going to flatten this out and give me a really nice looking manufacturing drawing that I can then annotate further. From here I can clean this up. I can start adding in uh, labels or bringing this into 2D and use this to generate a manufacturing drawing for this particular harness assembly. So what this gives us is a really good foundation for producing manufacturing prints that we can then pass over the fence into SOLIDWORKS Electrical 2D to annotate something like this, where we include cut lengths, tables, etc. It's really up to you what you include on this print, but what it does is it gets you this portion up here, and then all of this you can pull right from the electrical design itself. So hopefully this has given you a good overview of what SOLIDWORKS Electrical 3D is capable of and some of the benefits it can provide to you and your business. Now we've only really scratched the surface of what the software can do, so if you have any other questions on the software uh, or its capabilities, please feel free to reach out to me at trimac.com. Once again, my name's been Tim Pulaski and thanks for watching.